Okay, today we're going to talk about 10.2. Uh, it's a pretty simple, easy video, no more than about 10 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's just get started again. Uh, we have a lot of vocabulary, as we did in the first section. First, you have central angle. That's the angle whose vertex is on the center, okay? Uh, the central an angle is not depicted in this picture here with circle F, but you'll see that here on the next slide or two. Then you have your minor arc. A minor arc is a part of a circle that is less than 180 degrees. Okay, so any arc that is less than 180 degrees. An arc that is equal to 180 degrees would be called a semicircle. And then any arc that is greater than 80 degrees, we call that a major arc. So again, if you need to pause the video, take a second to pause the video and write these vocabulary words down to make sure you have them in your notes. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. If we're looking at this circle F here, if we look at arc AB, arc AB is this one right here, okay, arc AB is equal to 50 degrees based on what was given to us, so this is a, what we would call a minor arc, okay, all right, if we're looking at arc BE, and again, it's 50 degrees, so it's less than 180. That's why it's minor. So now if we're looking at BE, okay, BE is this arc here. And BE is given to us as 104 degrees, so it's a minor arc as well. Now some of you might be, some of you analytical heads might be out there thinking to yourself, okay, well, what if I did BE this way? And that's a very perfect, or perfectly rational question. The thing you need to understand is, is if you notice, the minor arcs are labeled with only two letters. The minor arcs are labeled with two letters. Because that's a minor arc, you know, I'm sorry, because it's labeled with two letters, you know it's going to go the shorter route. So that's why you know not to go that long blue route that I'm uh, taking off right now. Okay. All right, let's look at arc EDC. Arc EDC is this arc right here. And that's given to us as 180 degrees. So that would be a semicircle. Now notice, when I label this arc EDC, okay, and you see the arc symbols, that little half, that little curved line above the uh, two letters. When I label this uh, arc, EDC, it's giving me a direction now. It's giving me a starting point of E, a finishing point of C, but I've got to go through D, and that's how I get EDC. Because if I went the other direction, it would be ECD, okay? So the EDC, that third letter, adds direction and helps us figure out which direction we're talking about. Okay? And then finally... Let's look at arc EDB. Arc EDB, again, it's three letters. So that's another indicator to yourself that it's going to be a major arc because it's three letters or a semicircle. But we know it's over 180 degrees, so that's a major arc. Okay, and it is right here. EDB. Okay, and here's the deal. Let's apply some math to this, a little bit more math to this. If we know that EDC is 180 and EDB is 256, what is the measure What is the measure of arc BC? Well, it's pretty simple. You take your 256, that's this arc that we have right here highlighted, and you subtract the other arc that we know, which is actually not an arc, it's a semicircle. So we'll subtract EDC, because we know that's given to us. And semicircles, if you notice, 180 degrees half the circle, right? So we can subtract 180 degrees.
And we end up with the measure of arc BC is equal to 76 degrees, and that's a minor arc. Okay, so that's kind of one way we can apply some simple math to using the arc, arc measures, okay? And notice, arc measures are, are measured in angles just like a circle. We're not talking about the length right now. We're just talking about the arc measure. We'll talk about arc length later, okay? So if you have any questions, always write them down so you can come bring them to me in tutoring or after school, okay? All right, let's look at a central angle now. Central angle is another one of our vocabulary words. Now notice here, and this is very important, make sure this is in your notes, the central angle is equal to the measure of the arc. So here's our central angle right here, HIJ, okay? So when we're talking about a central angle, we'll talk, we're talking about this right here, okay? That's our central angle because it starts in the center of the circle, central center of the circle, and we have an angle created by two radius, right? So you know that these lengths are going to be congruent. But you'll notice that central angles are equal to the measure of the arc. So if the arc measure is 89.3 degrees, so this is the arc, HJ. If it's 89.3 degrees, then your central angle is 89.3 degrees. The converse of that is if we know that the central angle, HIJ, and again, that's this right here, the HIJ, if that's 89.3 degrees, then we also know that the arc length right here, HJ, is 89.3 degrees. Okay, very simple. Arc length, I'm sorry, not length, measure of the arc and the central angle are always congruent. Okay? Now let's look at congruent circles. Congruent circles have the same radius. Okay? So when you're looking at this example between circle L and this other example with arc BC on it, what you're going to know it notice is, is that LM is 2. Well, you see over here that this radius is also 2 because you have the congruent symbol. And so now you know that LA is going to be congruent to this, this B, and I'm going to name this, let's just call it uh, E, okay? So, so you're going to see that BE is congruent to AL as well. So congruent circles are not only the same radius, but you might also write this down, they're also the same size. And I know that radius is going to be what helps dictate the size, but uh, I just want you to make sure you understand that. Same radius, same size. Okay, so if you have congruent circles, then you're going to have congruent arcs. Okay, so the same measures of congruent circles. So for example here, if AM... is on a congruent circle with the circle E here, BC, is going to be the same also. This is going to be a very visual type problem, meaning that you'll be able to see clearly that they are the same circles. Because remember, the angle measures can be the same, but you may not have the same size circle. So if the radiuses are different, you can still have the same angle measure, but they're not congruent circles, so then their arcs are not going to be congruent. Okay, so for example, what I'm talking about there, because it's going to go hand-in-hand -hand with our next slide. So just notice, two circles are the same size, same radius, same size. Their arc measures are going to be the same. So moving here, if you look at these circles, these are co-centric circles, okay, meaning all the circles are within each other. Okay, that's a word that you need to be familiar with, co-centric, okay, co-centric circles right here. So here... Angle RAS, or sorry, angle PAQ, that's this angle here, is equal to 85.71. Now, that's the central angle there, and so what that's going to do is, is that your arc measure 
RS is going to be 85.71. Your arc measure TU is going to be 85.71. Your arc measure PQ is going to be 85.71. So all of those are the same arc measures, and they're all the same central angle measure, right? But they're not congruent because the circles are not the same size. Because here, you have an arc length of 4 centimeters, arc length of 6 centimeters, and an arc length of 8 centimeters. So because these arc lengths are not the same, your circles are not congruent. Even though they have the same arc measures and the same central angle measure, they're still not congruent because they're not the same size. And that's what this is over here, RS and TU. So arc RS and TU have the same measure in degrees, the same shape, but they're not congruent because the circles are not the same size. Okay? And that's pretty much it for this section. If you have any questions, please let me know. Write them down. Ask me in class. See me in tutoring. Other than that, have a great night.